Hey guys, in today's episode of How to Wire It, we're going to take a look at how to wire a stepper motor. Now, in previous videos, I've shown you guys how to wire up both regular DC motors as well as servo motors. Now, for me, stepper motors represent sort of the best of both worlds between regular DC motors and servo motors. So, regular DC motors, they spin really fast or they have a lot of torque, they can move a big load, but you don't really have any precision over position. You can't really pre precisely control where in its rotation it is. Servo motors, on the other hand, let you have precise rotational control over position, but they really don't spin very fast and they don't really, uh, oftentimes they don't go more than about 180 degrees. Stepper motors, sort of bring those two ideas together. You both get a lot of torque and continuous rotation, but you also get the ability to precisely control the position in the rotation that the motor is in. So, and the way a stepper motor works, just for a little bit of background, is basically inside of here, there are a few different, there are a few coils. And those coils, just like on a regular DC motor, you energize those coils and they cause the shaft to move. Unlike a regular DC motor, each time you energize one of the coils, it the motor only rotates a tiny little bit. It makes a single step. And when you have, so this is an example of a bipolar stepper motor. It basically has two sets of coils inside and each of those coils has two wires. And the basic idea is that when you power one coil, you step the motor a little bit, and then you de-energize that coil and power the other coil, it steps it a little bit more. And by switching back and forth between which coils you're energizing, you cause the, ro the, the shaft to rotate continuously. So let's go and start taking a look at how to wire this up. Now, I was going to show you guys how to wire up the stepper motor using an H-bridge like I have in some of my other motor tutorials. And it's definitely possible to do this. But instead of using an H-bridge today, I thought I'd use one of these very low cost stepper drivers. And these cost, if you look on eBay or Amazon, you can get these for just a couple dollars a piece. And they're much more suited to driving stepper motors. So Rather than going with an H-bridge, and it, yeah, H-bridges cost a little bit less, but this is sort of the better way to drive a, mo a stepper motor. And it's also much easier to code, and you'll see why. So if you, re if you guys really want me to do an H-bridge video to drive a stepper motor, let me know and I will do it. But for today, we're just going to take a look using a stepper motor driver. And I'll make sure to put a link to one of these guys in the description of the video, so you guys can find these and, and find other ones wherever you want. So yeah, just take a look in the description for a link for one of these guys. So let's go and jump into wiring this guy up. So I've come in close on the breadboard here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to start off by just placing the driver somewhere on my breadboard. And with the orientation, at least of this driver, I have the little potentiometer here, the little trimmer pot, uh, towards my Arduino. And the first thing that I want to do is just get power and ground established for this chip. So on here, we actually have two sets of power supplies. We have a voltage and ground for the just power on the chip, which can be anywhere between 3.3 and 5 volts. And then... Back here, we also have power for specifically for our motor power supply. Now, I will note that these guys on the motor power supply do require eight or more volts. I think it might be eight to 36 volts. So you unfortunately using one of these cannot power your stepper motor, your volt V motor off of your five volts coming from your Arduino. You do need to have a higher voltage power supply. But first, let's just wire up the uh, power for the chip. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ground wire and put it on this far corner here on 
on the board. And positive, 5 volts in this case, goes right next to that. Just one in from that corner. So now that we have the power for the chip connected, let's hook up the power for the motor. So we have another ground line and that is just going to connect again to the ground on our board here. So just like that, it's the second one in from the left here and we just connected it right to this board. And my external power supply, I'm going to wire up using this little, uh, this long jumper wire here. And I'm just going to pop that into ground for now. And I'm going to leave this part unconnected until a little bit later. The voltage for the motor, so that's your V motor, connects to that corner pin. And I, again, I'm going to leave this power connector unconnected for now, just having them in place for until later. So now we have all the power set up for this board. Let's go ahead and start doing some of the logic wiring. So the first thing that I want to do is the uh, third and fourth pins from the right here are the sleep and reset pins on this board. And I'll, I will be honest, I haven't used this board a whole ton. These are brand new for me. So in all of the online diagrams I've seen, those two have been pulled together. So I'm just going to connect them using this little jumper wire right here. And if you know why you connect those two together, let me know in the comments. I've honestly just gotten these boards. I don't know a whole lot about them. So let me know why it is you connect the uh, sleep and reset pins together. And lastly, before connecting our motor, I want to connect our logic for the board here. So connecting the Arduino to the board. So the first wire I'm going to do is this yellow wire. And I'm going to plug it into the rightmost corner pin there. And I'm going to connect it to my Arduino's pin 11. And this corner pin here is the direction pin. So when this pin on the Arduino is high, the motor will spin in one direction. And when this pin is low, the motor will spin in the other direction. And lastly, I got this white wire here. And this connects right next to that and connects to my Arduino's pin 12. And this white wire is the step wire. So every time we send a high-low pulse from the Arduino, it will make the stepper motor take one little step in whatever direction it is that we've chosen with the direction pin. So now that we have all the electrical connections wired up, let's go ahead and wire in our motor. So I'm going to zoom out here so we can see a little bit better. And on my motor, I have already gone ahead and figured out which two wires uh, go to which coils. So I have this, this is a bipolar stepper motor and there are two sets of coils inside of it. And each coil goes to a pair of wires. Now, if you don't know which coils you have or which wires correspond to, to your coils, the easiest way to figure that out is to just take a potentiometer and go to the resistance measurement setting and just tap each of the probes against, you know, one probe here and then one probe on the next wire or contact that you have. And when you get a reading where you have both probes connected and you get a small resistance reading, that is one coil. So basically if, you, if your multimeter says OL or overload or whatever it is, it means that those two wires are, those two contact points are not connected to each other and therefore do not represent a coil. So these two wires internally on the motor connect to, a, to one of the coils and these two wires connect to the other. So once you have that figured out, then you take your two coils and right in between your motor power and your uh, chip power, you have four or you should have four available slots open to you. So each coil 
goes right in those slots. So we have our first coil goes right there and there. They're right next to each other. And the second coil also go right next to each other. So it's just coil 1AB and coil 2AB. And that's all you need to connect up the stepper motor. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the code and get this running. All right, so here we have the code to run our stepper motor. And I've designed it to look fairly similar to the code used to run the uh, bi-directional motor in the H-Bridge tutorial. So up here at the top, we have our step pin, and that's equal to pin 12, and our direction pin equal to pin 11. And in setup, we go ahead and we set those as outputs. And before taking a look at loop, we have a couple of functions down here, and these are just a couple of helper functions just to make it more clear what it is that we're trying to do. So we have stepper forward and stepper reverse, and that, that just changes the uh, direction pin to either high or low. And then we have motor step. And motor step just basically pulses this step pin here just high low really quickly. So we just write step pin high, delay one millisecond, and then step pin low. And that tells the controller here to have the motor make one step. So in our loop, we start off by saying stepper forward, and that sets the forward pin. And we have a single for loop here that runs from zero to 100 each time making a step and delaying by one. So, and and this little delay by one just gives the, the system enough time to just let the motor actually make a step. So we run through going 100 steps in one direction, and then we call stepper reverse, and we do another 100 steps going in the opposite direction, the exact same for loop. So now that we've taken a look at the code, Let's plug this all in and see if it runs. So the first thing I'm going to do is finally attach those uh, power supply wires to a little 12 volt supply that I have. And now I'm gonna plug it in, we'll see if it works. Hey, there we go. So you might not be able to see it, it's a little bit hard to tell, but it's basically just pinging back and forth going 100 steps each time. So yeah, it's pretty easy to wire up one of these motors. And like I said, they have a lot of torque. I mean, it's hard for me to physically stop it while it's running. And they're really precise in positioning. The only thing that you have to watch out for with these is that if you put enough torque on them or, or whatever ha might happen, they can skip steps. So if I really grab it with my fingers, I can stop the shaft from spinning at all. But there's no feedback to my system here, to the Arduino, telling it that this motor stops spinning. So unlike a servo, where it actually has a sensor inside to detect where in its rotation it is, this has no such sensor. So if you have something that requires very precise positioning and you need to always make sure that you're at the right position, you might want to add some, some way of detecting that position, either attaching a rotary encoder to the stepper motor output or a linear encoder or whatever it might be. But these don't basically, they don't have any feedback. So you need to implement your own feedback if it's really critical. Otherwise, yeah, stepper motors are great. They're really fantastic, high torque, high position control, and they're really not too hard to wire up. So that's it for today's video. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, definitely subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up if you like. And I'll see you guys later.